I'm Charles Marshall from the Preventive Neurology Unit at Queen Mary University of London and the Dementia Research Centre at UCL. And our paper, The Functional Neuroanatomy of Emotion Processing in Frontotemporal Dementias, is out now in Brain. Frontotemporal dementias are a group of neurodegenerative diseases with variable profiles of change in behaviour and language. There are three main syndromes, the behavioural variant of frontotemporal dementia, which is led by progressive change in behaviour and social function and associated with atrophy of the frontal lobes, insulae and temporal lobes. The semantic variant of primary progressive aphasia is a progressive erosion of semantic knowledge associated with predominantly left-sided temporal lobe atrophy. And the non-fluent variant of primary progressive aphasia is a disorder of speech output with atrophy focused on the left inferior frontal lobe and insula. All of these diseases are associated with social and emotional changes that are important determinants of morbidity and care burden, but remain incompletely understood. We aim to define the functional neuroanatomy of three distinct components of emotion processing in these diseases. The sensory processing of social signals, emotion categorization ability, and autonomic responses to emotion, which are important for emotional contagion and empathy. We recruited 60 participants, 38 patients with frontotemporal dementia, of whom 17 had the behavioural variant, 12 the semantic variant, and 9 the non-fluent variant, as well as 22 healthy controls. We acquired functional MRI whilst playing participants dynamic naturalistic videos of facial expressions representing the core emotions of anger, disgust, fear, happiness and surprise. We used scrambled dynamic mosaics formed from the original videos as a visual baseline without any facial or emotional content. During scanning, we recorded heart rate and pupil size in the scanner. And after scanning, participants performed an emotion identification task, choosing the emotion from a multiple choice list for each of the videos. Across all participants, viewing of dynamic facial expressions was associated with activity in face and biological motion responsive regions more on the right than on the left, including the face selective fusiform face area, the biological motion responsive middle temporal area, as well as the posterior superior temporal solstice, which is known to be a key hub for the processing of social signals. Activity in the middle temporal area was attenuated in the behavioural variant and non-fluent variant groups, while activity in the fusiform face area was attenuated in all patient groups relative to controls. This was despite consistent activation of primary visual cortex across the groups. Emotion categorization ability was impaired in all patient groups relative to controls. In the behavioural variant group, emotion identification ability was predicted by activity in the left anterior insula and chordate, regions known to be important for the integration of body state representations with affective judgments. In the semantic variant, emotional identification ability was predicted by activity in the right temporal pole, which is a key site for the storage of social concepts and person-specific semantics. And in the non-fluent variant, emotional identification ability was predicted by activity in the right frontal operculum, which has previously been implicated in the motoric representation of emotional facial expressions. These results suggest distinct neural bases for a common symptom across these syndromes. In the healthy controls, viewing facial expressions induced a consistent slowing of heart rate, which was greater for the facial expressions than for the dynamic mosaic videos, suggesting some specificity for the emotional content. The facial expressions also induced a pupillary dilatation, which was greater than for the dynamic mosaics. Cardiac reactivity was attenuated in all patient groups relative to controls. We looked at negative correlations of heart rate change as a proxy for parasympathetic activity and found predictors in both regions important for sensory processing of the stimuli like fusiform face area and middle temporal area, as well as components of the central autonomic control network, including ventromedial prefrontal cortex, anterior cingulate and insula. When we looked at positive correlation of heart rate change, which was a proxy for sympathetic activity, we found predictors in regions that are known to be important for central autonomic control, like orbitofrontal cortex, insula, 
and brainstem effector regions such as parabrachial nuclei and ventrolateral medulla. Pupil reactivity was attenuated in the non-fluent variant and again was predicted both by activity in sensory processing areas like the fusiform face area and autonomic control regions like the anterior cingulate. In this multimodal study, we have combined functional imaging, behaviour and physiological recordings to deconstruct socio-emotional symptoms in the working brain of patients with frontotemporal dementia. We hope that this kind of study will yield a new class of pathophysiological biomarkers that will improve our ability to detect and track these complex symptoms.